I'd like to tell you a story about my friend Christina. Christina and I met in university in 2006 when a very popular social media channel was being introduced into the world. One afternoon, when I logged onto said social media channel, I saw a status pop up, which simply said, Christina is feeling low and sad. I'd never seen anything like this before in my life. I jumped up from my computer desk, pushed back my chair, darted across my university bedroom, down the hall to Christina's bedroom, knocked on her door, pushed it gently to, and was shocked at what I saw next. There was Christina, laughing, smiling, and happy. I was trying to make sense of what I'd just seen moments ago in my bedroom versus what I was seeing in front of myself now. Christina, are you okay? Yes, kids, why? Because I've just seen your status saying that you're low and sad. Oh, that. I didn't know what to say, so I just said that, but I'm fine. My friend Christina is one of the most open, friendly, emotional, intelligent people that I know. She's gone on to have a successful career and a family of her own. If ever she needed to share something with us, she would speak to us face to face. She would come knock on the door or pick up the phone. That was not her. Now, I love social media, and I know that that's not a sentence that you hear often, but as a millennial who has grown up with it, has a career in it, and owns a business which specializes in marketing on it, for me, it's true. I live, sleep, and breathe social media. and could talk to you all day about it with a whole host of other subjects. But I come to you today with just one thought. Are we simply editing a social media status, or are we editing ourselves? Today, hundreds of people across the world will write a status, press the backspace bar, write a status again and press the backspace bar. For what reason? For the social media world. But in the real world, there is no backspace bar. We've lost in our fears and our worries and concerns, thoughts along the lines of, is what I'm about to say right? Or am I doing this correctly? Why are we suddenly so concerned and worried about expressing who we truly are and saying what we really want. Because for the first time in human existence, we're trying to deal with and comprehend with the fact that we can say anything about anyone, and anyone can say anything about us, and it is somewhere permanently to be documented at arm's reach. Now, we've always been able to say whatever we want about whoever we want to ourselves, but now we have an audience accessible directly from our pockets. Now, social media is about creating content, and humans love creating. Creation is an expression of ourselves and our identity, and it gives something for us to be memorized by and talk about. And as humans, we are born to be social and tell stories. It's stories which help us to bond and come together. And online, there are so many authentic storytellers who share their knowledge and facts and insights and their truths. In fact, who they are authentically offline seems to be who they are authentically online. But I've seen so many today who've been in a constant state of self-editing that who they are authentically changes with the algorithms and the trends so that they can get likes, comments and shares. Likes, comments and shares has become of such value that now it's big business and you can buy them. This deliberate overhaul and oversharing of our lives so that we can get these likes, shares and comments, has that almost now come to the detriment of ourselves? As humans, we are born with five senses, and it's these senses that we use to make sense of the world and create memories and stories for which we can use and tell our friends and family and bond with others. But when we're on social media, we're only using two to three senses. And are we really creating memorable moments? Can we remember the time that we're spending in somewhere that's creating these stories? Are we really bonding with other humans and connecting with others? Or are we connecting with a screen? One of my favorite pieces of research states that human communication is broken down by these statistics. 55% is done through body language. Every tiny twitch, every sway of the torso, even down to every big gesture, communicates something. 38% of communication is done through tone, 
and 7% is done through words. Could we argue then that we are editing ourselves and our natural human way of communication by up to 93% when we go online? Now, humans are born joyous, compassionate, curious creatures, and it's through learned behavior that we change and adapt. And a recent report has shown that we are rewarded and more likely to get those likes, comments, and shares when we participate in a negative conversation on social media. But of course, something that's negative, which is going to disturb our core values and beliefs, is more likely to get us participating and joining in than it is a positive one. In fact, the negativity on social media became so bad that campaigns such as the Be Kind movement and the Be Nice movement, reminding us of who we are as humans, that we are naturally compassionate, joyous souls were created. Is that a good thing, that we had to be reminded of what it means to be human? Recent statistics show that there are about 3.96 billion people on social media. That's roughly about 50% of the world's population. And we're spending about two and a half hours a day on it. And whether you're lurking, which means you're just having a look, or you're participating, you're on it. Now, aside from the fact that I don't ever remember being asked how long I spend on it, along with my peers, I'd challenge if those two and a half hours is the right measure of how much is impacting us, of how much it really is pulling us away from our instinctive human sensory selves when we're talking about it, reading about it, studying it, constantly checking it. I'm doing a TED talk on it. And we're rearranging our plates of food for the perfect photo on it. I'd like to tell you a story about my friend Matthew. Matt and I recently met for brunch we grew up together and we have been friends for 22 years and we are both early adopters of social media channels. And when our food arrived, mine was just eggs on toast, his was noodles, he got out his phone, leant over the table and picked up my lunch and took a selfie with it. He took a selfie with my lunch. <laughs> Matt, what are you doing? <laughs> Taking a picture of your lunch, kiss? But why? For my socials, kids. But surely you want to take a picture of your own food, Matt. Yeah, but yours looks better and I'm just doing it for the likes. The likes? Now, I would have been shocked at what Matt said to me next, but I'm not. Ugh. To be honest, kids, I don't know why I'm on this anymore and I don't know why I'm wasting my time. Matt is a very well-known architect and he is well-respected in his field. He is one of the most goal-orientated, driven people that I know. To see him question himself like that, that was not him. Now, there are so many positives when it comes to social media, none more so that during the COVID-19 global pandemic, we really witnessed its power. Because even though we were isolated in our homes from friends and family, we were still enabled to contact and communicate with them through statuses, through images, through video updates. There are so many other positives as well, and I'm so pleased that the world got to see the power of it, which I've seen from day dot. Positives such as people going missing, being found, people who have unusual interests and like-minded communities coming together, an opportunity for us to be expressive in ways that we haven't been before. But I know this, and as much as I love social media, I'm seeing a pattern repeatedly that despite the trends and changing algorithms, this one's continuing to get worse, and it's affecting my friends, my peers, my family, and once upon a time, me. Why is editing so detrimental? Well, as a marketeer, I can explain to you that when we have something which requires editing, it becomes something else. We usually edit something for maybe six weeks to six months tops. We don't do it for 15 years plus. What type of humans are we becoming if we edit out our natural method of communication, expression, building relationships and bonding?
So I'll leave you with this thought. Are we just editing a social media status? Or are we editing ourselves? Thank you.